Welcome to another Adafruit wearables teardown. Today we're looking inside the Mayo armband. It's a gesture sensing device that you wear on your forearm. It has muscle sensors that detect the electrical signals when you contract your muscles, as well as an orientation sensor. So you can do whole arm gestures and also navigate through PowerPoint presentations, your music library, and other cool applications just by moving your arms with gestures. Communicates with your computer over Bluetooth, and after some simple calibration, you're all set to go. This device was really interesting to take apart because it has electronics in each of the cells connected by a flexible rubber gasket. Let's see what Lady Ada has to say about the design of the electronics inside. Thanks, Becky. This is kind of one of the more interesting mechanical designs for wearables we've seen. Uh, instead of like one circuit board and a wearable uh, clip-on device, it's got multiple circuit boards and batteries and you know one main board and these sensors and what's going on here? So uh, thanks for taking it apart. Let's look at it under the microscope. So well, first up, there's the main board and this is the board that kind of controls all the sensors that are in these little nuggets. So the main board, you've got your you know micro USB connector. What I kind of like is this is a, it's kind of a flat in line with the PCB design. It's got these big mechanical connections and there's a cutout and it sits in the center of the circuit board. So that's, that's kind of cool. And then over here we have the main processor. This is an MK22 FN M0 V12. This is a, a Freescale Kinetis Cortex M4 processor, uh, kind of similar to what's in the TNC 3.2. The M4 is, is the big sister to the M3, so it has DSP capabilities, which is probably why they picked this chip. Um, they're gonna do a lot of sensor analysis, taking like six different sensors and figuring out what are patterns between them, probably using some DSP in there. Uh, over here, you know, we've probably got some regulators, maybe a battery charger over here. We have um, a few LEDs, and there's these really lovely injection molded light pipes that are used to, you know, the LED light, it goes over here, this sits in place, and it turns the light into like a lovely bar shape, like this one, or a, um, a large flat shape. This is the other light pipe is over here. So there's, you know, indicator lights, and that's how they, they get it out to um, the molded body. You've got a crystal over here for this, this processor. It's a BGA processor. Under here, you know, this was actually had a little metal cap, and uh, we pulled that off with hot air. And underneath here is uh, our favorite, the NRF51822. This is the Bluetooth Low Energy Transceiver Plus processor, uh, Cortex M0 processor all in one from Nordic Semi. And you see this really nice ground stitching over here with um, the Balin and then a ceramic antenna coming right off of here. Uh, they put it right next to the vibration motor, which is. It's pretty ballsy, actually, because this is extremely noisy. Maybe that's why they had to tin it. You know, they put this, this tin on top to um, give a nice ground protection so that the noise that's gonna come from this motor, which is right next to the radio processor, you know, I'm surprised that it works so well, but maybe they make sure never to use the Bluetooth at the same time as they're buzzing. Maybe they kind of alternate so that they don't have to worry about this noise feeding into here. It can flip over. And on the flip side, they've got a bunch of test points programming. They're not labeled, but you're know, definitely going to be the programming pads for the Nordic. It uses SWD as well as for the uh, Kinetis processor, probably also either JTAG or SWD. And then over here, there's an InvenSense MPU 9150. Uh, this is kind of a well-known 9DOF sensor. I believe that this particular one also has built-in uh, uh, fusion, like kinematic fusion. So it uses the magnetometer, accelerometer, and gyroscope to tell you the orientation and, and movement. So it gives you uh, quaternions and vectors rather than just saying, oh, you know, this is what the gyroscope says in raw data. This is what the magnetometer says in raw data. So you, you, know, you have to sign a couple NDAs and, and probably pay a licensing fee to InvenSense to get access to that. But uh, for a high-end wearable like this, it's not a big deal. So this is what gives it the where in space is your arm, not just your muscle movement. So you have to have both to do proper gesture sensing. And then you've got a flex connector over here. It's got the little flip up so you can uh, slide in this flex connector. Three electrodes. And what it's doing is it measures the microvoltage differentials between the electrodes. And on the back, 
a little circuit. It's not exactly clear what it is, but I'll tell you what, whenever you see you know, something that's sensing and you have a 14-bit, a 14-pin chip, it's gonna be a quad off amp. And the four at the end of the part number kind of gives it away, especially you see all these 0402 resistors and capacitors. This is the amplifier and signal cleaner upper for uh, the electrodes over here. So probably amplifying it, doing maybe a little bit of filtering just to give you a, a band pass of what signals you're looking for, uh, and then buffering it along to be read by the kinetis with the DSP. So each of these are connected one after the other. And this one also has the battery, which is kind of interesting. They, instead of having the one large battery, they actually kind of split the batteries up so they could get you know two of these uh, 260 milliamp hour lipolys, but not have one big 500 milliamp hour one. So it's a little bit more expensive. Um, and also you have to worry about charging and balancing them separately. Um, this one does have a three pin connector, which makes me think that inside there is uh, a temperature sensor or, or some sort of balancing control. Kind of an intense manufacturing process here, but it seems to me like you know, they really, really wanted to have something very slim, something very elegant looking. And so splitting up the sensors this way, having a complicated flex circuit, multiple batteries, pretty hardcore processor, Bluetooth low energy, a lot of analog circuitry. So a, an advanced wearable, probably the most complicated one, and um, definitely the most I'm surprised it works category. So congratulations on making something that works. For this and many other teardowns, we use these tools and the Adafruit USB microscope with its articulated stand. What wearable device should we tear down next? Let us know in the comments and check out our other teardowns at the playlist in the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the Adafruit channel on YouTube.